So this week we talked about the satanic altar that had been set up inside the Iowa Capitol building, and it was put there by the satanic temple as a response to the manger scene that is also inside the Capitol building. Uh, the temple claims that it has the religious liberty to set up satanic altars in government buildings if it wants to, and the Iowa state government didn't even attempt to fight them on it. There was no, uh, the only thing the Iowa state government fought them on was that you can't have an actual severed goat, goat's head, but which is what they originally wanted. Uh, but other than that, you go ahead, Satanists, set up your altar in the state house. And uh, so they relented right away, and they let this depraved mockery occur. Well, yesterday, a man named Michael Cassidy uh, decided, Iowa resident, uh, a, a veteran, decided to do something about it. And, and here's what he did. This is the post-millennial reporting. A satanic altar erected in the Iowa Capitol building has been torn down and beheaded by a Christian and former military officer. According to the Sentinel, Michael Cassidy pushed over and decapitated the statue, which was placed in the building by um, members of the Satanic Temple of Iowa after receiving permission and discarded the head of the statue into the trash. Cassidy told the outlet that he destroyed the altar on uh, Thursday to awaken Christians to the anti-Christian acts promoted by our government. Cassidy said, quote, The world may tell Christians to submissively accept the legitimization of Satan, but none of the founders would have considered government sanction of satanic altars inside Capitol buildings as protected by the First Amendment. Anti-Christian values have steadily been mainstreamed more and more in recent decades, and Christians have largely acted like proverbial frogs in the boiling pots of water. Uh, Cassidy turned himself into officers who were present in the building, who confirmed the Satanic Temple of Iowa seeks to press charges. Cassidy was charged with fourth-degree criminal mischief. Cassie said, quote, I saw this blasphemous statue and was outraged. My conscience is held captive to the word of God, not to bureaucratic decree, and so I acted. Just, uh, gr- I mean, awesome. Great response. Um, and uh, great to see it. And by the way, what he said is, everything he said is obviously completely correct, including the point about our founding fathers would not have considered this protected by the First Amendment. And everybody knows that. Don't even try. Like, do you really think the founding fathers would have accepted satanic altars inside, you know, uh, the, st- the state house of any state? Like, which founding father do you think would have endorsed that? Of course they wouldn't. We all know that. Now, the update here is that there was a legal defense fund set up for Cassidy by the Sentinel, which is the outlet that initially reported on this. And uh, I was happy to chip into his uh, legal defense. TPSA pledged $10,000, I think. Um, they were only looking to raise 20000 and uh, they raised it in like three hours, and then they paused the campaign. So I say this is a win so far overall. Somebody took down the display. They took matters into their own hands. They took the initiative. Uh, a bunch of people rallied to support that person, and, uh, and it's a win. I mean, it's a big win. Um, now, there have been some uh, on the right. Well, of course, you know, on the left. I, it's, in fact, I just saw someone tweeted out, saying this was a bigoted, this was a bigoted act. Okay, bigoted against who? The devil? Like this is, this is devil phobia? Satan phobia? Is that, is that, sure. Yeah, you're right. Um, So you had that on the left as expected, but even some on the right, as you would also expect, have uh, expressed concerns. They're concerned. I don't know, I'm concerned, but this concerns me. It's concerning. I'm a little concerned. And so they've accused us, those who support Michael Cassidy, they've they've accused us of of supporting and cheering on what legally qualifies as uh, vandalism. That's what they've accused us of. And and yes, that's exactly right. That is what we're cheering on. They also say that uh, the Satanic Temple has the, the First Amendment right to set up its Satanic altar inside a government building. And we may not like it, but... You know, if they want to set up a satanic altar in every state house in the country, there's nothing we could do about it. We can't do anything. We just have to sit back. Every state house could be turned into a satanic, uh, into a into a platform for worshiping the devil, and there's nothing we could do. We just can't do it for the sake of freedom. This is freedom. This is what freedom is. 
The holidays are rapidly approaching, but we can find peace and calm in the craziness of the season with Hallow, the number one Christian prayer app in the world. Immerse yourself in Christmas and Advent prayers, meditations, and peaceful Christmas music. Hallow also offers an extensive library of Bible reading plans accompanied by insightful reflections and audio-guided meditations. Whether you're a seasoned Bible reader or just starting your journey, Hallow provides a platform for you to engage with Scripture like never before. A great place to start is with Father Mike Schmitz's Bible in a Year podcast, in which he offers brief daily readings and reflections available on the Hallow app. The Hallow app also connects you to uh, uh, like-minded individuals sharing experiences, insights, and encouragement along the path to spiritual growth. This Christmas, join Hallow's Christmas Prayer Challenge, Advent with C.S. Lewis. For the 25 days leading up to Christmas, you can join you can focus on the real reason for the season with prayer, meditation, and Christmas music on Hallow. Download the app for free at hallow.com slash Matt Walsh for three months free. That's hallow.com slash Matt Walsh. They say that if, if we think that it's okay to have a manger scene, then we also have to think it's okay to have a satanic altar. That's the claim. Right? That's the equivalent. So if we're opposed to... BLM rioters torching a CVS, we have to also be opposed to a guy decapitating a satanic altar. And if we support a manger scene, then we also have to support a satanic altar. We have to treat everything equally, these conservatives claim. Because everything is the same. We're not allowed to notice any difference between things. They're all the same. And that's what it means to be free. That's what freedom is. Um, but no, that's not correct. Everything is not the same. You know that everything is not the same. Everyone knows it. We all know that. Okay, you know these things are not the same. We don't have to pretend to believe otherwise. So here's my basic position on this. And, and I do think, as I've, as I've argued, that there is a legal argument here that the satanic altar is not valid religious expression under the First Amendment. Um, as I've been saying all along, you know, according to the, the Satanists themselves, the whole Satanism thing is essentially a parody, a mockery. They don't even pretend to have a theological belief in the reality of Satan. So I don't think that uh, even by pure legal standards, this qualifies as First Amendment uh, uh, expression. But let's forget that for a second, because that's not my fundamental point. My fundamental point is this, and this, this is going to blow your mind. Um, good things are good. Bad things are bad. That's it. That's what I believe. So I support good things, and I don't support bad things. I think that good things should happen, and I think that bad things shouldn't happen. And so when a good thing happens, I say, that's good. And when a bad thing happens, I said, that's bad. So that's how I approach life. And it's, it's revolutionary. I mean, this is a re maybe to you, if you're a normal person, if you're a sane person, this is not revolutionary. But, but to a lot of conservatives, this is, revo this is a revolutionary concept. The idea that, well, oh, so you can notice when something is good and treat it as good. And when something is bad, you can treat it as bad. I was, really? I said, that's, no, this is, that's, that's not what the founders would have wanted. That's not what Thomas Jefferson would have wanted. I don't say I don't care if that's what he would wanted. You know, if that's what he wanted or didn't want, I don't care anyway. But uh, but you're incorrect on in what the founders would have wanted. So the idea that I'm bound by the principle of liberty and human rights to draw no distinction between good and bad is insane. Um, and and that is an idea that the guys who came up with the doctrine of human rights which lies at the foundation of our country, did not believe. So they themselves did not share this modern notion that in order to respect everyone's rights, we have to pretend that everything is the same and be just as welcoming of bad things as we are of good. That is, again, insane. It's ridiculous. I want a good society that is ordered towards the good and where goodness is encouraged and welcomed. And I want a society where, therefore, badness is discouraged and unwelcomed. This is basic stuff. So... Uh, Putting this in practice, if a guy spray paints, you know, uh, graffiti on a cop car, um, you know, he sprays a cab on a cop car or whatever during a BLM riot, um, 
And then you know, you've got that kind of vandals. And then over here, you've got a guy uh, dismantling a satanic altar. Are those the same? Well, no, because the guy with the spray paint is doing something that's obviously bad. And the guy who's getting rid of the satanic altar is doing something that is good. And so I see them as different. For that reason alone, is a manger the same thing as a satanic altar? Are we bound to that? Well, you support the manger. You're stuck with the satanic altar. It's just the way it is. You can't, you're impotent. You are impotent in the face of the satanic No. Because the manger is good. And the satanic altar is bad. I can make that distinction. So can you. So can everybody. And then you're left, well, who's to say what's good? Who's to say what's bad? If you find yourself saying that about Satan, well, who's to say that Satan is bad? It's like literally the definition of bad. So, um, no, who's to say what's good and bad? Uh, I don't know, all of us. Like, we all know. This is natural law. You know, these are, these are, these are basic moral insights that everyone has access to. How do we know that a satanic altar in a state capital is bad? Uh, or, you know, who's to say that? We, we all know that. Every single one of us knows it. The only difference is that some people pretend they don't know it. Hey, YouTube, thanks for listening to the show. If you'd like access to my full show with no ads, you should go to dailywire.com and use promo code Walsh to get two months free on all annual plans. See you there.